About 150,000 Americans became brokers in the past two years, many looking to find the path to riches in the industry. Just how much money could people be looking to earn? The Real Deal found out how much you can make in the industry, from the bottom of the ladder to the top. At the top, we have presidents and CEOs of real estate investment trusts. They made an average of $5.95 million last year. That's up 17% from 2020. While average CEO salaries only went up by 2%, bonus compensations jumped a whole 42%. CFOs netted similar increases. The highest earner of the REITs was ProLogia CEO Hamid Malkadam, who earned $24.9 million last year. Other C-suite execs took much of their payments in stocks and experiences. Vornado, for example, reported spending $750,000 on cars and drivers for just four executives last year. Founder and CEO Stephen Roth, who earned $9.8 million last year, has been opting to take 80% of his salary as Vornado stock for the past three years. This makes 98% of his salary tied directly to the REIT's performance. And unfortunately for Roth, Vornado stocks are down 50% from 2019. Long-term equity grants make up the majority of executive compensation. As a matter of fact, salary only counted for 13% of the median CEO's compensation at publicly traded firms last year. Leslie Hale, the first black woman to lead a publicly traded REIT, has a base salary of $840,000, but her total compensation ended up being $16.3 million, including long-term equity. At some companies, most execs are actually required to hold a multiple of their base salary in stock. Douglas Elliman CEO Howard Lorber has a salary of $3.4 million and is required to hold at least three times that amount in Elliman stock. At brokerages, the C-suite looks quite comfortable. Compass's Robert Refkin received $89 million worth of stock last year. On the ground, the amount of money a broker will net depends on how much work they're willing to put in. New agents often opt to join teams at brokerages in order to get listings, meaning they'll be splitting their earnings with a brokerage and team. As they close more sales and hit certain deal volume, they'll be able to negotiate for better splits, with some even taking 90% home. While most brokerages decline to share the details of their splits and salaries with the real deal, we can estimate that the highest earning teams like the Eklund Gomes team at Douglas Elliman may be netting over $10 million after selling $492 million worth of property last year. Regardless of price point, agents tend to charge between 4 and 6% commissions, but if an agent breaks into luxury real estate, those percentages can turn into a matter of millions. What do you think? Is the industry the path to wealth reality TV and social media can make it out to be? Or is it just as hard as any other field to make it big? Let us know in the comments.